so intimidated because every countdown he makes is so much cooler than I am. Like, I don't have the, the moves to keep up. Hey, I'm so glad that you're here. If this is your first time to be here, we are honored that you have come today. Um, we know that uh, th- there's, there's, you know, there's a lot of things that you could be thinking in your mind when you show up to a new place, especially a new church, and hopefully you can just relax today and it's okay. We're not, we're not bringing the snakes out today. That's going to be next week. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. She said she, she got on to me. That's a, that's a joke. Online, that's a joke. We don't do that. Uh, but we're so glad that you're here and really just, just the pressure off just to just enjoy Enjoy today, and uh, we're so glad that you're here. We really are. Uh, and I want to clarify something in, in, in the video that we said. Um, the new groups won't be posted online until August the 12th. Uh, and so if you, if you go look for new groups already, uh, they, they will be up there then. And then last week we said, hey, if you want to volunteer for Treasure Quest to help with these kiddos, you can go to the, to the app and you can look for Treasure Quest. And it was not there because I failed at my job. But this week it's there, so you can go and do that. Please uh, help us in uh, we, we, on, our, on a normal Sunday, we have, you know, 50 or so kids on the first floor, so for Treasure Quest, there's no telling how many we're going to have. We need some, some, some people to help us. So if you'd help us out with that, just go on there and, uh, and kind of kind of kind of just a real simple form and submit that so we can know, and we'll follow up with you. Uh, so this is, oh man, what week of... Week three, week three of At the Movies. So next week will be our last week of At the Movies. So be sure to grab like a postcard and invite somebody back with you. And it really will be a good one that if somebody, you know, doesn't, doesn't come to church or, um, you, you know, you've been trying to, trying to get somebody to come to church with you, it, this is a great one to get, get them to come back out to this, this last one. But today we're watching a, uh, a movie that uh, is kind of another family favorite. We said that the week one with The Greatest Showman. Uh, man, we, we, we love it. And I don't know how many times we've watched The Greatest Showman already, but it's a ridiculous amount of times. Um, but there's a, another one that we've really enjoyed um, for, for this year that we've watched, and it's called Wonder. Now, my daughter had read the book, and she's one of those people, you know, you, you don't know who I'm talking about in just a second. They're always like, well, the book was better, you know, I read the book. And I'm like, oh, just stop it. If they make a movie out of it, that's totally better because I just got to watch it. I don't, you know. How can it get better than that? Uh, but so she'd read the book, and, she, and, and she, she wanted to watch the movie when it was coming out. And so I was like, okay, we'll watch it, we'll watch it, we'll watch it. And then we never did. And when we finally did, we're like, this is a great movie. So if you have not seen this movie yet, we are going to totally spoil it for you today. But you need to go back and watch the whole thing in its entirety because it really is great. So who in here has seen Wonder? Okay, so not, not, as, not as many as we, as we had last week for seeing that one. So you really need to go watch it. You will, you will really, um, you'll really like it. And um, now the first time that I saw it wasn't with my daughter, though, because we, she had wanted to watch it, and she was really upset at us because my son had a field trip, and we were going to go watch Wonder. And she's like, no! I'm like, I'm sorry. So the first time I watched it was in a theater, right at the Pines Theater with my, with my son Zane. And this is one of those movies that will like, make you laugh, make you cry. And I'm like, in there with a room full of people, I'm like, Eric, hold it together. Hold it together. There's a lady right beside me crying. I'm like, I'm not going to be that guy, you know. And like, if you know me, I'm a movie crier. There was a Barbie movie one time at the house, and I was tearing up with this stupid Barbie movie. So like, I made it through the movie. But it, my eyes were burning, you know, let me tell you. But it really is a great one. It's, um, it's a great movie about a kid named August, Augie Pullman. So check out this first clip. So as you can see, Augie loves space. I love that last little scene in the covers. Like, I wonder if they have like a couples one. That'd be fun, you know, like, I don't know. Um, but I just love it. Um, and he feels like a spaceman. I think there's really more behind that than just um, that cover there. And why? Because he feels like he doesn't belong on this planet. He, he feels like he's different enough. He must not belong. And so, really, in, 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 a, um, in a culture and in a world so consumed by what is seen, so appearance-driven, uh, he must be in the wrong place, right, to, to be... Whenever you look at him, people respond in the way that they do. Uh, much less to think about, like, middle school. Who remembers middle school? Oh, gosh. I mean, I got a chill down my back thinking about middle school. Oh, man, I got stories. Y'all have heard some, but, man, I don't, I don't share the, the, real, the real scary ones. Um, 
middle school, much less if you had a reason to be picked on, you know, uh, it, 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 he had uh, a, a tough time going into middle school. See, the tension of the film is really this, that Augie is a very cool, smart, and fun kid. And, and you'll see that through, through the film. You'll like, this guy is really a cool guy. Um, but because of his deformity, no one really gets to know that at, at first. Nobody knows really how cool of a kid he really is because of the way that he looks, and, and, and he just gets, gets, gets pushed off. That's kind of the tension that we see in the film. See, because we live in, in, in such a world that is a see, form an opinion, and then act-driven world. So we, we will form our opinions based solely a lot of times on just what we see, what we think about it, and that depend, depends on what we, what we do and how we live out our lives. Who you are, what you can do, who they are, what's going to happen is based off of what I see first, only with what I uh, can, can view and see, and that's how I base my whole life. But I guess my question and thought then is, and, and we'll kind of see this throughout the movie, is how much do we miss out on by living this way? How much in life do we miss out on by only living by what we see? Augie enters middle school, and as expected, it's, it's not easy. So, and he, he asked that question, so the, tr- the question really is, what kind of person is it that you really want to be? And uh, I think that's, a, that's an important question to struggle with. And, and, and really, as we watch this, our hearts go out to Augie already, you know, and, and already walking the halls of middle school would already be difficult, and then... You know, everyone's zooming in on him. He's got to go kind of into, into to a different, you know, dimension in his mind there to make it through. Um, see, because what happens is they looked at him and already made up a decision about who this kid must be. He must be some weirdo. I mean, we're not going to be his friend. You know, I know that y'all have never made that decision before, but I, I know I've done the same thing before, too. I look at somebody and I already think what I, what I know about them. You know, I already think what, what I'm, I'm going to react, and I already know if we're going to be friends or not. I don't know if I'm going to like them or not. Um, I look at situations in my life. I look at things that are in front of me, and, and, I, and I feel like if I'm going to be able to make it through this or not, or, or, or what's going to happen or not. So, so much of what I do is I look at first, and then I base everything else off of that. See, a series of experiments by Princeton psychologist Janine Willis and Alexander Todorov reveal that it takes a tenth of a second to form an, imp- an impression of a stranger simply by their face. Tenth of a second. So, like, not something that you got to think about. Like, I'm going to totally judge what I think about them. I mean, you don't do that much thought process in a tenth of a second. We look and we, and we come to a conclusion within a tenth of a second. And, and so that's just the culture and society that, that, that we live in. We live through what we can see first, and that's how we form our, our, our opinion, our sight, our, our appearance driven in our society. We live towards ourselves in the same way. You know, what I see in front of me, what I see about me um, in, in the same way, and that's how we decide how we're going to live. See, in the Bible, this happened as well. In, in the Bible, they, they were, um, in, in, in the Old Testament, they were going to choose a king. And so everyone's idea of the best king was based off of really one thing. What was that? He's got to be a big, brawny, awesome-looking dude, right? Because you can't have somebody who's, you know, not awesome-looking to be the king, somebody who's not huge, somebody who's not very handsome. I mean, you wouldn't want to have that. And so they were looking to the appearance first. And so here, here's what we see that God says to the, to the uh, prophet Samuel in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. It says, uh, the Lord said to Samuel, don't consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. Talking about the ones that he's rejected, because they, they were bringing other people before him, all these brothers in this household, before they picked David. And said, the Lord does not look at things that people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. The Lord looks at the heart. Um, in, our, in our world, our primary reference points are what we look at, what we see. Um, reference points, I mean, it's those things that we, that we use to base how we make a decision off of. 
So the way that I'm going to decide on how to proceed is going to be based on what I see first. Um, the things that we look to to determine what has value and what has meaning and what's worth my time in life. It's the things that we, that we look at and we make that decision in about a tenth of a second. And so many times we stick with that decision and we live that out. But what about the unseen? What about the unseen? Um, just like God told Samuel, there's more below the surface. And I, I'm talking about as who people are, but I'm talking about bigger than that. But there's, there, there's, there's more going on than what we just look out into our world at people, at ourselves, and see. There's a seen, but there's an, there's an unseen. We, we live by what we see so many times, but is that really the best way? Is it really the best way to judge everything off of I do, that, that I do in life off of just what I, what, I, what I can observe in my own mind and make decisions about? Is that the best way? Or could it be maybe um, that the unseen should be the first thing that we look to? Let's look at this. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says this. This is kind of our, our, our mandate as believers. It says, for we live by faith. Not by sight. See, there's an unseen that's got to be the main focus of our life. Hebrews 11, 1 through 2 says this. Said, now faith, kind of describing what faith is. Faith is, is the confidence in what we hope for and the assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for, their great faith. Faith is, is, that, is that device that we use to hold on to what we can't see. That's called faith. Faith is, is that confidence that we have in what we hope for and the assurance about what we do not see. That's faith. If there's a tool that I use to see the unseen, that's called my faith. That's my faith. Um, why does taking hold of the unseen really even matter then? Let's look at verse 3. Hebrews 11, verse 3 says, By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that, listen to this, so that what is seen was not made out of what is visible. Think about that. See, we base everything off of what we see. Um, but the scripture teaches us that everything that is seen was really created by the unseen. So, so many times we're placing our life and our opinions and our decisions in the directions of our life based off of the things that are really more superficial than the thing that really matters. The unseen creates the seen, not the other way around. What we, what we don't see is actually far more real, far more powerful, and far more important than what we can just look out and observe day to day. And we can agree with that, I think, even as it comes to people. Right? Isn't, isn't the, the unseen way more valuable than just the seen? And as it comes to God, there's so much more than just as we look out in our life and we just see. We see the situation. We see ourselves. But maybe that unseen world through faith, God is up to something bigger than just what I see. See, so what we have to do is we have to change what we see. His friend Jack begins to kind of see him a little bit different and realize maybe, maybe he's not just some freaky kid after all. Maybe this is really a cool kid. Maybe this is a good, a good friend. And uh, he begins to understand that what, what he's been seeing really isn't all that there is. And he hasn't been, hasn't been seeing things correctly. He he realizes that, that to Augie is more than just what's on the outside. And may, maybe, just maybe what's on the surface isn't all that there is. And maybe that doesn't decide everything. And kind of, I like that water scene. They poured the water in and they were able to see something they thought was just one way. And they were able to see it differently. And they could see that word differently through water. How do we see differently, though, in life? I mean, we've, we, we, our minds want to form an opinion in a tenth of a second. 
You know, we want to form an impression. I mean, not just about people. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about the way that you live your life in general. And we look out on the landscape of our life, and we already make decisions on how we're going to live, what we're going to do, who people are, all of that, all just based on a quick observation. How do we change that, really? Because sometimes what if over here is where seeing makes sense, but over here is really where God wants us to be? How, how do we begin to see more clearly, like, kind of like the water going in the pitcher? See, it, it requires that thing called faith. Seeing differently requires faith to, to, to change our perception. On the surface, things look one way, but below, there, 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 there may be something completely different. See, on the surface in your life right now, maybe all we can see is, is the, the pain that you're, that you're going through. Maybe this situation, but, but maybe below the surface, through that pain, maybe there's, it's producing something in your life that's going to uh, bring you exactly where God wants you to be, but we can't see that because we, we we're basing our, our entire destiny and, de- and, and, and direction off of what we see right now. What if on the surface, I, all I see is my inability my flaws, my, my mess-ups, but, but below the surface, there's a supernatural strength and a supernatural calling that I couldn't see before. What, 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 if, what if on the surface, I see all my weakness, but, uh, but below the surface, it's really God's strength that it takes anyways, but we're basing everything that we do off of just what I see, and I'm missing out on, on the unseen. I'm missing out on what God is really wanting to do. On the surface, there's uncertainty. I don't know what to, to do in this situation. I, don't, I, I, I just don't understand, but, but what, what if below the surface there really is provision and there really is a plan? What, 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 what if there's a seen and an unseen? On the surface, right, I don't like them. Who's ever, who's ever been that person to form an opinion in about a tenth of a second? I have. I mean, like you walked in this morning, I already said, I don't like you. I mean, I don't know why. Um, but we do that, don't we? So often. I mean, obviously, it was the opposite kind of pastor. I immediately like you. Um, but we do that, and we form these opinions about people. Oh, I don't, I don't like them, but what if below the surface, they're exactly who God's putting in your life, but we put them at arm distance because if we, don't, we don't like what we see. In, in, our, um, in our culture, there's a lot of things that we look at and we see first, and then we judge people off of. Whether it's their appearance, their, their, their community, their color. We base all of these opinions, but what if that person is exactly who God is wanting to put in your life, but you're keeping them at a distance and you're really keeping God's plan away from your life? There's an unseen that's way more important than anything seen. Way more important. Um, so have we been seeing through the wrong lens? Have we been seeing things incorrectly? I know I'm just as guilty as anybody of coming to the wrong conclusions based off of what I just observe. I, I tend to look, and I, then I decide how I'm going to act from there. I mean, there was, uh, there, there was things going on just the other day that, that immediately what I saw was something like, I don't know what we're going to do. You know, you know what's going to happen next? And, then, and then that's the first default reaction, right? It's like what I see... But if we can stop for a second and to, to by faith, to, to, to tap into the unseen and say, God, what are, what are you up to? What are you doing? Because there's something unseen that's so much better than anything that I could ever really understand. I have to remind myself that I, my, my trust is in the God of the unseen, the God, who, the, the, the God that I can't just physically reach out and touch right now. But that same God created everything that I see. And that same God is for me. So I have to stop and I have to say, God, I trust the God who is greater than everything that I see. Who's got a plan bigger than what I see. Because really, it boils down to trust. Will I trust simply what I observe today? Will I trust that our God, the unseen but, but ever-present God, all-powerful God, is, is he really greater? 2 Corinthians 4.18 says this. says, so we fix our eyes, 
are we fixing our eyes really on, on just what we see and we observe, right? But this right here says that we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, what is unseen, that's eternal. I mean, it's so much more important and valuable and powerful if we'll look beneath the surface and say, God, what are you doing? So Halloween comes around. Augie's favorite time of the year. Why? Because he feels just like everybody else. He gets to cover up and he gets to put his costume on. Well, he walks into the classroom and uh, he's wearing a, wearing a costume and his friend Jack, who, who they become pretty close friends, uh, Jack gets around some other friends and he didn't know that Augie was listening because he didn't see him in the costume. And um, Augie overhears Jack making fun of him and, and saying, if I had a face like that, I'd wear a mask too. And, and these things, and, and obviously Augie's crushed. And so Augie's distanced himself from Jack, and, and, and he's really hurt, and he thought school was going one way, and then now he's, he's really depressed and upset, and he didn't want to be a friend's, Jack's friend anymore, and Jack finally realizes what he's done, he didn't even know what he did, and why, why Augie's so mad at him. He finally, finally realizes the huge mistake that he made, and really, uh, what he's been missing out on, because he's decided again to look at the wrong things. so true and there's two sides to every story and come on who's ever been talked about before or something you're like hey you gotta be smart enough to there's two sides to every story right I mean you, you're a little or you're a little kid and your brother goes running to mama and telling what happened right there's two sides to every story but really the bigger picture and I think in life we have to we have to remember that same phrase all the time in front of us there's two sides to every story there's the scene there's what's in front of us but there's the unseen there's two sides to every story. There's two sides to what, to what we're going through. And it's so easy, really, to, um, to get sucked back into living in just a life based off of what I see. And not allowing God to really work through me and through what's happening. And not really seeking God and saying, God, could show me in this situation where you're at, what you're doing. It's so easy just to live our lives again simply by what is, is seen. How do, how do we then make that perspective change through faith like we're talking about? It, it really comes through having to see with different eyes. My eyes are limited. My eyes in a tenth of a second, I've already made up my mind about you, or at least got an impression. We have to see through different eyes with, with, with God's eyes. It, it, to, as we look at others, as we, as we see ourselves and who we can be in Christ, and as we look out upon our life and our destiny and our situations and who God's called us to be, we have to see with his eyes. We have to see, because we read earlier already in, in 1 Samuel, that he doesn't, doesn't look at things the same way that we do. He looks deeper. He looks below the surface. He looks to the heart. How do we do that? See, Seeing how he sees, for us, it requires hearing what he says. See, seeing what he sees requires hearing what he says. And, and how do I know that? Because the scripture tells us in Romans ten seventeen. so faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of God, okay? Faith comes through hearing, hearing the word, word of God, or what is this translation says, the words of, of Christ. So it comes through hearing. Not just through our eyesight, what we see first. We have to be strengthening our faith. What we have to make sure that we do in life is make sure that God's voice is louder than what we see. God's voice and his direction and what he says has to be louder than just what's in front of us. Because the, what we see all the time is going to tell us a different picture. A different picture of who you are, of what you can do a different picture of who others are, a different picture of what life is supposed to be like than, than what the Scripture says and what the Bible teaches us and what God's Word says. We have to make His voice louder than what we see through, through, through getting into His Word, through spending time with God, through getting around good, godly people. We have to make His voice louder than the sights that we put ourselves in, we immerse ourselves in, every day. Who's ever woke up, you spent time with God, and then you went to work, right? That evil, horrible place 
that you call the workplace. Maybe yours is awesome, but you just had a tough day, and there was a customer, man, there was an order wrong or whatever that was, and it was obviously all your fault, right? And, and so real easily, just the, the normal everydays that get put in front of us will, will show us a different picture than what God says about us, what God says about our life. We have to keep his voice louder. We have to have consistency in making sure that our hearing is more tuned in than our seeing. Because God is speaking to us, and that's what it takes to see through God's eyes. Because with, with, with time in God's presence, I can see situations in people different. I can tell me, if I, if I don't spend time with God, you, I, I know how I get even with time with God, okay? Like, I struggle. Without him, man, I don't, I don't see anything but just the, the calamity and destruction. The world's coming to an end. It's all, we're all going to die, right? That's kind of my perception. Ha, ha, glass is not half empty. That thing was busted and broken. You know, it's on the floor. But through God's eyes, we can see things totally different through his eyes. And that's what we have to do. So, Augie makes it through fifth grade. And um, what he does through this journey, it's really a story of, of a kid that, that helps his school to see that there really is more than what they just looked at. Now, who already wants to go home and like, okay, we're going to have to rent this movie now. God, they're filling all the gaps and everything. Oh, it's a good one. You, you, you need to go watch it. But uh, it, it, what, what you look at, right? I mean, the bigger question is not just look, but what are we, what are we looking at? What are we, what are we choosing daily to, to fix our eyes on, uh, to, to, to keep our gaze affixed to? Because I'm telling you what, you, what you look at is where you will wind up being. It, it sets the course of, 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 your, of your life. It sets the course. There's so many times, like, when I'm driving, like, I'll be looking out this window, and then I will see my wife will hit me, like, hey, because I'm, like, veering off. Like, I, sometimes I think, like, when I'm alone, am I going to die? You're like, because I, I, ha- I don't have her to be my Holy Spirit, you know? Because um, where we look really does set the course for where the direction of our life goes. And, and so the, the big question is that I have for you is where are you looking? I mean, are, are, are you just deciding to look at the things in front of you? Because sometimes, honestly, I'm going to agree with you, those things can look bleak. Uh, I don't have all the answers for those, those things. We, we can look at our own lives and, and just see all my inabilities and, and, and my limits and what I can't do. What, what do we choose to look at when I look at other people? Do I just see all the things that make them different? Do I just see all the reasons that I shouldn't uh, be nice to them or have them in my life? Or, or is there really something that's worth looking below the surface? Is the unseen really the most important? And, and I would argue that it is. Because it's the unseen, the God of the unseen, who created everything that we see. And if we'll just take the time to say, God... Help me to see through your eyes. God, help me to to see my life, to see things going on. Help me to see things differently today, God. And I'm telling you, just life itself has a way of um, adjusting our focus back to it. So we have to continually keep his voice loud. We have to continually keep his voice in front of us at all times so his voice can be louder than what we see what are you using to base your doing off of you're making big decisions right now big life decisions what what are you using to base that off of just what you see determine If you would, can we all determine together? Can we go ahead and decide now? Because sometimes if you 
you very rarely sometimes make the right decision in the moment that you haven't already made the decision you're going to do something right. Let's make the decision right now to say, I will look to the unseen first. I will look to God first. I will look to below the surface. I don't understand all the things that are happening. I don't have all the beautiful answers. But I know that before I act on what I see, I'm going to look to the unseen. I'm going to look there first because my God is able. My God is loving. My God is for me. The scripture says I'm more than a conqueror. My God is love. And so maybe there's an unseen world that's bigger. God, I know what's right in front of me right now. I know that my observations tell me to think and do something right now. But God, what do you say? Let's pray. Father, I pray that you would just realign our vision, realign our eyes, realign what we see, God, to to fix our gaze on the unseen. Because it's the unseen that's eternal. It's the unseen that really matters. But God, it's that scene that's in front of us every day that seems to dictate everything that we do. Because God, it's right there. God, I pray that this morning that you would just fill our hearts with hope to know that there is a, a God waiting for us. In whatever situation, whatever's going on, that you're there. And that God, I just pray that that, Father, would your voice be louder than what we see right in front of us? God, I speak into whatever's going on in people's life, that, God, you would give fresh eyes. Because, God, you have too big of a plan for us. You have too big of a hope for us, for us to be held up on just what we see. Help us to see ourselves and others through, through your eyes. As your eyes are closed, I just want to ask you a question. If you're in this place and you know you've you've never given your your heart, your life to Christ before, can I just tell you that scripturally the Bible teaches us that's why we were created. And that today we're talking about the love of the Father and all of this, and, and all this is for you. No matter what you've done, how far you've went, there's, there's a God in heaven who sent his, his son Jesus on this earth for the, for the full reason of providing a way back to him. And all it takes is saying, God, forgive me of my sin. I accept Jesus as my Savior to change the eyes of what you see in your life and who you are. He says that he creates in you a new person. And if that's you today and you just need a fresh start in Jesus, this is the moment. Would you slip your hand up? I just want to know who I'm praying for. Awesome. Come on, I just want to pray a prayer. And I want us to all pray this together. Say, God, forgive me. Forgive my sin. Forgive my sight of seeing the wrong thing. I'm your child for now and forever. Change how I see so I can see the unseen. I love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Father, we're so grateful for you. God, and I just ask that you would take us, God, and and, And help us to start basing our lives off of what really is important, what is really powerful, and what really matters, not just what's really in front of us at the moment. Amen. Thank you for joining us online today. Make sure to stay connected with us throughout the week on Facebook and Instagram at City Church Lufkin. If you're looking for a church home here in Lufkin area, we'd love for you to join us on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. We believe that God has a greater life in store for you. Let's discover that together. If you've been blessed by this ministry, we would love to give you the opportunity to help reach others just like you. By giving your time and offering, you're making a way for other people to experience the love and hope of Jesus. 
There's a link in the description box where you can go online and make a donation or you can simply open the City Church Lufkin app and give there. Whether it's a one-time donation or a reoccurring gift, every dollar makes a difference. And before you go, we want to encourage you to be you. When God made you, He knew exactly what He was doing. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. We'll see you next week. And God bless.